SpaceX is proposing to lease an additional 100 acres of land at NASA's Kennedy Space Center or KSC. That is insane. With the robust development of the Falcon rocket in the past two years and the promising future of Starship not far behind. This proposal is a pivotal move for SpaceX to stride even further into space. A new structure, SpaceX's Star Factory, has been built to replace the old production tent and base structure. But how will Star Factory change the Starship production process? So, what exactly is SpaceX doing in Florida that's shocking the entire space industry? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. Starship is the giant jewel of the space industry. Undoubtedly, in the future, it'll be heavily utilized and launched many times at Starbase. However, at the current moment, Falcon rocket launches continue to dominate the launch market and Florida still sits regally on the Golden Throne. With an average of three and a half launches per day, SpaceX has launched Falcon rocket 75 times from the start of the year until now. In a bold statement, SpaceX probably boasts of its productivity, stating that in 2023 alone, Falcon 9 has propelled over 900 tons of cargo into orbit. Not only that, but SpaceX has set a goal to launch 144 times next year, leading to an average launch frequency of only 2.3 launches each day. This is truly remarkable for a goal that no other company has achieved, if not to say they deemed it impossible. Well, to cheer on and foster even grander ambitions for the future, the future of Falcon rockets and even the future of Starship. Both will evolve together and emerge as dominant players in the industry. SpaceX is currently gearing up for its most extensive expansion in Florida. They proposed a massive 100-acre expansion at the Kennedy Space Center, aptly named the Roberts Rhodes Campus, to broaden their operational scope. In particular, the Maritime Sigma incorporates a site map, specifying that the aggregate area of the new facilities shouldn't surpass 1.5 million square feet, with a facility height limit set at around 400 feet. Of course, the buildings of SpaceX mustn't be taller than NASA's renowned Vehicle Assembly Building, which stands at an impressive height of 526 feet. So where exactly is the Roberts Rhodes Campus? The Roberts Rhodes Campus, approved by Kennedy Space Center in 2018, currently spans 67 acres and serves as a pivotal hub for SpaceX's operations. While not frequently showcased to the public, this site has played a crucial role in various space endeavors. Notably, one of its prominent facilities known as Hangar X serves as the epicenter for refurbishing Falcon boosters destined for future flights. The significance of Hangar X extends beyond SpaceX's internal operations, and NASA and SpaceX occasionally open their door to astronauts, granting them a first-hand view of the very rockets propelling them towards the ISS. And with this new proposal, both NASA and SpaceX stand to benefit strategically from the expansion. SpaceX will bolster its operations in Brevard County by constructing additional infrastructure. They plan to expand office space and industrial facilities and upgrade their amenities. The construction is estimated to take two to three years, and the location will be put into immediate use upon completion. Essentially, SpaceX envisions the consolidation of diverse operations from the Falcon programs to the innovative Starship endeavors into a unified and centralized campus for easier oversight, streamlined operation, and increased efficiency. This strategic move aims to enhance operational efficiency and streamline various facets of SpaceX's initiatives. As for NASA, it aims to fulfill its mandate to encourage the fullest commercial use of space and to foster commercial space launch industry, aligning with national directives such as the Commercial Space Launch Act and National Space Policy. That's why this expansion agreement also helps them add another tick to their leaderboard, contributing to the boost of the state's economy. Additionally, SpaceX also proposes to widen Saturn Causeway from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Phillips Parkway, approximately 3.9 miles, to support launch vehicle transport. Saturn Causeway would be widened approximately 8 feet, from approximately 26 feet to approximately 34, and drainage swales would be improved. Construction would also occur within the maintained area along the southern side of the road. 
the scale of their growth is tremendous. We can't fathom how much further SpaceX can develop in the future. It seems like they remain the only players without limits in the space industry. In essence, the proposed expansion details reflect SpaceX's commitment to a balanced and sustainable vision. By setting limitations on size, enhancing transportation infrastructure, and considering the project's full scope, SpaceX aims to not only expand its operational capabilities, but to do so in a manner that respects and enhances the unique ecosystem of the Kennedy Space Center. There's a proposed 100-acre parcel, an evaluation of the various alternatives we looked at, and a detailed analysis of all the potential environmental effects of moving forward with that proposal. As the public commenting period for SpaceX's proposed expansion at the Kennedy Space Center drew to a close October 16, the evaluation process entered a pivotal phase marked by careful consideration and analysis. SpaceX, in collaboration with regulatory bodies, now turns its attention to the valuable feedback received during the public commentary period. Each comment becomes a piece of the puzzle, contributing to a comprehensive understanding of the potential impacts and concerns raised by stakeholders. The next crucial step involves a meticulous evaluation of these comments to determine their substance and significance in shaping the final environmental assessment. This thorough scrutiny ensures that all perspectives, whether from federal agencies or the public, are considered. SpaceX is committed to an inclusive and transparent decision-making process, acknowledging that the collective insights garnered from this evaluation phase will play a pivotal role in refining and optimizing the proposed expansion plan. However, the leaders of SpaceX have deemed it possible. That is one of the main goals they had set for the Starship project, which will help humans get to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. And you need not look any further than Starbase in Boca Chica Beach, Texas, the central operation where SpaceX is creating Starship prototypes at. The facilities here are considered at the cutting edge of engineering technology, but when measured against the goal of producing a Starship every day, it's still not enough. Changes and upgrades still need to be made, and since the beginning of last year, there have been notable modifications and updates that took place. A new structure, SpaceX's Star Factory, has been built to replace the old production tent and base structure. To date, perhaps there are still many people who feel that Elon Musk's Mars dream is unrealistic. However, Musk never gives up and always shows confidence every time he mentions his dream. That is the great vision of the richest billionaire as well as the owner of the largest rocket and spacecraft manufacturing company in the world. Not only Elon Musk, but his assistant current SpaceX president Gwen Shotwell, always had very bold and confident thoughts about the Mars project. Earlier this year, at the FAA's annual Commercial Space Transportation Conference in Washington, D.C. on 8 February, she said, Why can't we build a rocket every day? That's what we're focusing on with Starship, attacking every part of the production process to be able to build lots of these machines. But can they actually do it? We'll get back to this question later, but another question that's more apparent now is why SpaceX wants to do that. And perhaps we'll have the answer when we look closely at the Mars project. Earth's nearest neighbor, Mars, at the closest distance, is also 33.9 million miles or 54.6 million kilometers away from us. To complete this long journey, it may take us up to seven months or more, but it'll be more difficult for a starship to fully carry out the entire mission. Thus, it would need other ships to hold fuel and cargo for the long journey ahead, hypothetically. After arriving on Mars, the problem will become even more complicated. We would need enough food for the astronauts, enough equipment and tools to improve land and terrain conditions, then build the first dwellings, or houses, whichever you like. Also, we need to build a launch and landing system for the next flights. So what exactly do we need to prepare? If you said that we'd need hundreds, even thousands of starships to handle that huge amount of work, well good job. In any case, we'd need many types of starships as well to serve a certain task, for example, the cruise starship to carry crew, the cargo starship to carry goods, materials and equipment, and a fuel tanker starship to get, well, you know, it's all in the name. With its large number and specific functions, they'll optimize and simplify the stages and missions. 
that's why SpaceX wants to create a rocket every day, as per Shotwell's statement. However, SpaceX's current infrastructure cannot meet such big ideals. During the development of Starship, the notable facilities serving their production were at the production tents. They have been built since the early days of Starbase, becoming a symbol of the Starship production system. These arch-shaped structures play an important role in creating the Starship and super-heavy prototypes we know today. However, it's difficult for them to meet current and future workloads. In terms of size, the tents with 114 by 35 meters are quite cramped to accommodate many steel rings. Regarding height, in many pictures, we can see that one Starship's nose cone is almost as tall as the doors of the production tent. This is very inconvenient, as large parts cannot be placed inside the tents, and many steps will have to be carried out outside the tent to have more spacious space. This will cause work to be greatly affected by the weather. During the production system, each tent will have its own function. For example, SpaceX uses a tent for works related to the engines, another tent to produce the steel rings and domes, and the remaining tent to work with nose cones. Such a specific division can help make work clearer, but the work process cannot take place continuously and requires moving between tents many times. Such movements may affect other work in and around the tent. But besides the production tent, other structures serving assembly like the mid-bay and low-bay are also becoming small, unable to contain the huge Starship prototypes. After SpaceX built larger structures like the High Bay, Mega Bay, and now the Mega Bay 2, Electric Boogaloo, which can hold about two or three complete Starship or Super Heavy. Prototypes inside, small structures like the Mid Bay and Low Bay have become obsolete. Just with SpaceX's ambitious goal of a rocket every day, the aforementioned structures need to be eliminated to make way for larger and more modern structures and systems. Enter Star Factory. Earlier last year, SpaceX started to build Phase 1 of the Star Factory next to the production Tent 3. This year, the next phases have also begun. About two months ago, the first structure, the Low Bay, was demolished, followed by production Tent 3, Mid Bay, and the most recent, production Tent 2. Star Factory has begun expanding construction on the location of these structures. After removing the old structures, the area was cleaned up, followed by the process of pouring concrete, building the frame structures, and finally finishing with the roof and walls. Currently Star Factory still does not have a complete shape as planned. The reason is because the production tent one still exists. However, this last tent may be removed soon to create a complete structural space for Star Factory. Once completed, the Star Factory will be a large square structure with an estimated area of about 60,000 square meters or more. That's four or five times larger than the space of the three previous tents. It's also large enough to carry out high workload production activities. Thereby, SpaceX will not need to worry about space to store Starship parts. In addition to expanding the area, the box-shaped structure will help Star Factory optimize the internal area compared to the previous arch-shaped structure, which only reached the maximum height in the middle. Because you know, that's how tents work. The next difference of the Star Factory is that it'll be a unified structure instead of previous separate tents. Thanks to that, all work will take place in the same factory, so the stages will take place continuously without the need to move outdoors like before. Additionally, the design of the factory will also help the work inside not be affected by weather like the open structure of the production tents. Another extremely important factor, which is production technology, will also be upgraded. Star Factory is built based on Tesla's Gigafactory model. This factory is famous for its automated production lines that help create millions of electric cars each year. SpaceX will definitely want to apply it to Star Factory. If new technologies are applied, production work will become automated. Productivity will increase at a faster rate than previous manual methods, meeting the needs of mass production in the future. If these upgrades come to reality, the future Starbase will be extremely different from what we see today. And it wouldn't be surprising if we see many other 122-meter-tall 9-meter-wide monsters standing everywhere at Starbase of the future, much like inside the base structure, rocket.
garden, launch pads, or even at the OLM. There needs to be more changes in order to reach Shotwell's stated goal. Starbase will probably need to continue to expand, other structures will need to be built, and SpaceX will need more of Star Factory. But that certainly won't stop the talented leaders and engineers at SpaceX. After completing the first Star Factory, they can completely create a second, third, or even more. If you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next video thanks for watching. By the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to. For more information download the Talk Talk app here down below.